Hey everyone, this is Lokahol, and in this video we are going to be speaking about the update to Path of Exile 2 that we saw last night. So in this video I'm going to be speaking about the good and the bad, and that's pretty much it. So let's start with the good. The main thing that stood out to me, other than the graphics of course, was the combat. Finally, we have combat in Path of Exile. The ridiculous pace of PoE is one of the few things that I don't like about the game, and it exacerbates pretty much every problem that we currently have with it. There's no real combat in Path of Exile in its current state. You push a button, the screen explodes, and everything dies. You don't know what you're killing, you don't know why, you don't play differently around different mobs, and most of the time when you die you actually have no idea what killed you. These are all incredibly frustrating things that by slowing down the combat tremendously, we will actually solve a lot of those problems. There's currently very little mechanical skill involved and players are not rewarded by playing well because there's just too much happening to react to. So the only thing that you're rewarded for is having a good build and having good items, but never actually being a good player. How many people do you know make videos about the mechanics of PoE? And how many players do you know who are actually good players? I mean, Mathel is known as having good mechanics and being able to do things like Uber Elder with 2000 life, but I mean, that's about it. No one ever speaks about it. But with PoE 2, we might actually start having videos where it says how to play with spears effectively or how to play with bows and crossbows. And people say, when you see this mob type, you might swap to this. You might want to disengage here and re-engage here with the spear. I think this is so good for the game. But something that Chris mentioned is that they want to maintain the current pace of PoE 2's endgame with PoE 1's endgame. So I'm really hoping they reconsider and keep the kind of pace that you're seeing on screen now. Let's also talk about a few other reasons that slowing down the pace will be good. So, obviously we firstly get actual combat, but also it means that fewer items will drop. If there aren't 10,000 monsters a map, that means fewer items are dropping on the ground, it means we have more FPS, it means you have less RSI, but the fact that fewer items drop means that there would be an increased potential for meaningful loot. Currently, the reason that 99.9999% of rare items suck and you don't pick them up is because hundreds of them drop every map. So if every 10 rares was a decent item, then you'd be finding, you know, 10 or 20 good rares every map. But let's say only 10 rares drop in a map and 5% of rares are something decent, something that you'd want to look at, you might actually start picking them up and identifying them and looking for upgrades. Another thing, flask piano, something everyone complains about, something that causes RSI and just is, it's a meaningless thing that just you, you know, rhythmically roll your fingers across the flask every couple of seconds. Think of it this way, if mob density is reduced, and the pace of combat is reduced, then flasks immediately start to matter. Let's say you only see a pack of 10 monsters every, well, okay, I don't know, every couple of screens, there's a, a smaller pack of monsters and your flasks are refilling once every 30 seconds. Then you're gonna have to stop and think, okay, I wanna use my health flask here, but if I engage another pack of mobs, maybe it won't refill and then I will die to that or maybe I want to use my Quicksilver Flask here but I know that there's a boss coming up and I'll need to have that speed to run away. I won't be able to just, you know, kill a thousand mobs before the boss and refill it so it doesn't matter. That again is something that slowing down the combat dramatically like we're seeing in the gameplay would remedy. And I think the current flask system could be really good, but because of the pace of Path of Exile, it is pretty much meaningless. You're just rolling your fingers over the keys every few seconds. So that 
is one of the things that I'm seeing in Path of Exile 2 and I'm thinking this could be brilliant. The whole game could be improved purely by slowing down the combat. But all that being said, if GGG want the end game to be the same as it is now, then pretty much all of this is meaningless. But I'm curious, what do you think? Do you want end game combat slowed down with fewer mobs or do you prefer the kind of push button screen explode type of gameplay that we currently have? Let's move on to the next obvious thing, the graphics. The visuals are very obviously stunning. This beautiful terrain with this tremendous verticality. You can see looking over the edge of the areas, there's things happening further down on the ground and all of it comes together to make this world feel really alive and lived in and it's beautiful. I absolutely love the artistic style, the colors, but not only that, but now we have a 3D HUD. So I don't know how many of you noticed, but while we were watching the gameplay trailer on Twitch together last night, we noticed that the HUD was changing color and depending on what was happening on the screen, whether there's lightning bolts flying away or whether you're in a more sunny area, your HUD reacts to that. So that's another great little tiny touch that doesn't impact the game in a huge way, but it's subtle and really clever. And I love that. Also, the Act 2 town that we were shown, beautiful, incredible. There is this huge moving caravan town that is being drawn along by these slaves, I suppose. I assume they're not doing it out of their own will, but <laughs> let's just say that they're being paid and working for that. But it's being drawn along by this group of humans and the whole thing is swaying and shifting in the wind and even the little trinkets lining the rooftops are kind of swaying with the motion of the caravan. And I think there's going to be a lot of stuff in this game that hopefully at least through the first playthrough, we're going to be able to stop and look at and appreciate. And that kind of fine level of detail is, it's wonderful. I think visually this game is stunning. It looks better than any other ARPG that we have seen that is to come out, if you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I'm very excited for this. Next thing, new item types, crossbows and spears. These are two of the new items that we saw in the trailer. So with spears, these are gonna allow for much more dynamic mobile gameplay, allowing you to kind of dive in and out of combat and engage and re-engage and have more close up and then more range attacks. Amazing, I think it's great. Having that sort of identity to weapons is gonna make for much better combat. However, I'm gonna say it just one more time, all of that is meaningless if the pace of this ends up like Path of Exile because you will not ever think, hey, I should re-engage here, I should disengage. You're just gonna think, what's the best skill that I can use that'll explode everything instantly? So there's yet another reason why the pace needs to slow down. We also were shown the crossbows, which allow us to switch between different attack types, depending on the kind of enemy that you're engaging with. We will have armor piercing bolts, incendiary bolts, and permafrost bolts. Those three words are now ingrained into my mind, completely seared there forever after watching this trailer because that character would not stop saying it. Another nice thing about these items is it seems that they will have implicit abilities. So they're actually gonna have built in skill gems that then you can add support gems to. So that's a really nice touch that they've added. They spoke more about this in the first PoE2 trailer. So I'm not gonna go over that too much, but I think it's really nice that you pick up a crossbow, equip it, and then suddenly you've got these new skills that you can play with. You don't have to pick up a crossbow and then think, uh, what's good with this? Where do I buy that gem? It's just inherent. It's part of the item intrinsically equipped alongside it. So 
that's great. And of course, we can't forget the bosses and something we've been asking for for ages, which is static HP bars for major bosses. I personally never really minded not having static HP bars for bosses, but it's something a lot of people have been asking for for a long time. So congratulations, you got what you wanted. And I think it looks really good. It's not too in the way. It doesn't cover up much of the fight and it'll just help you kind of keep track of your progress with the boss. Also the boss design, it's beautiful. The models are incredible and the fights are kind of tight and claustrophobic and their abilities are well telegraphed so again that change of pace of combat means you'll probably have to stop and think and play a little bit differently and you'll see a slam coming and you'll dodge it and then re-engage all of that is great all right let's move on to the bad so there's really not a lot of bad that i saw obviously we're gonna have to jump into the game to play it and see the one thing that stood out, like I mentioned, was the ranger constantly shouting out armor piercing bolts, permafrost bolts, incendiary bolts every time she changed the skill. And I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it so that you don't have to look down and actually manually check which skill you're using. But that is really, really annoying. I hope they change that. Also, after a while and after playing a character, you know where on your skill bar your skills are. You don't have to check every time you want to flame dash and look down and be like, uh, uh, um, okay, flame dash is on R. And then you push it. No, you, you get that muscle memory while playing through the act. So I think that's a really pointless thing that they've added. Just annoying. I'm sure they will adjust it or have a toggle for it. Maybe some people like it, but I mean, Really, this is nitpicky stuff. The only other thing, and this is slightly bigger, and you'll probably be surprised to hear this, but I am not too impressed by the design of the new enemies. So don't get me wrong, the, the actual visuals of these monsters is incredible. I really like the way they look, but they don't have that same iconic feeling that forces you to engage with them differently. So for any of you who have played Diablo 2, think of Burning Souls or Stygian Dolls or Beetles or Fallen. These monsters all have an incredibly unique theme. They engage combat with you differently. If you kill them, they might explode. So you know, okay, I need to back off before I do the last hit on this thing. But all of these monsters, they force you to play differently and maneuver differently and think and respond differently. And what we're seeing in PoE 2 is, as far as I can tell, not a whole lot of that. Some of the monsters do more kind of slammy skills. Some of them kind of summon things. Some of them, I don't know, whip you or whatever, but I'm not seeing a monster. I'm like, oh, that's that thing. Every time I see that, I need to, you know, back off a little bit or I need to make sure that my lightning res is capped before I go into act two because I know that there's going to be things shooting lightning at me. I'm seeing a lot of kind of monsters just swinging their arms at you and hitting you. And again, coming to combat, that doesn't really look too thrilling but maybe what we saw was just not enough to get a good idea of what they have and of course once we play it ourselves maybe that will be clearer and we'll be able to say okay there's a big chunky guy i know that he's going to do a slam attack every two seconds i need to back off quickly and then re-engage so take this with a grain of salt but that's kind of what i noticed while watching it all in all I'm incredibly excited for PoE 2. I think that it has the potential to solve a lot of problems that we have with the current version of PoE 2. And before we go, I know a lot of you are gonna ask, when is it coming out? We don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. My guess, probably early 2023, maybe, maybe next year at some point, we're gonna have some kind of open beta or closed beta and we'll see more but don't hold your breath it's gonna be a while in the meantime we'll still have lots of 
hopefully excellent Path of Exile leagues and expansions. So until then, let's just keep the hype going because I think this is going to be a good one. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash local local hall <laughs> and have a wonderful day everyone stay safe in part of exile and in real life bye bye